My dear comrades, welcome home once again to our Soviet Socialist Republic of Androvia. That is a name that was suggested by one of our comrades and for obvious reasons I love it, so that is what we will be using from now on. So here we are in the clouds, floating peacefully above our Republic. And it has been about a week since the previous episode was recorded, so in this past week I have had the opportunity to learn a lot more about this game. But just playing on my own and discovering and experimenting with various things. And also on the load shedding front here in South Africa we now have a bit of an improvement. This past week has been very difficult with load shedding level 4 during the day and level 2 during the night. <laughs> which meant that basically every day we had at least two power cuts and during the night on average once per night. So it was very difficult for me to upload because I usually do that overnight. But at any rate, now things should be a bit better because one of the power lines to Mozambique has been repaired, I believe, and that was of course due to the cyclone there. Very devastating, but there we go. So yes, let's turn now to our great republic, comrades. We're home again and so many buses are on their way, but that is not a bad thing, I think. One of the things that I did learn is, actually, it's not always a good thing to have so many buses. In this case, it's fine because we have multiple work sites concentrated in one area, you see, and there's always a gap for people to still come and work. But if you have just one building on its own and you send people there like the power plant, as soon as it reaches the maximum number of workers, nobody is getting on the buses anymore. And then by the time the buses get to the power plant, they're empty and the work shift ends and then they have to start getting back on the buses. But then there's a power cut at a very frequent rate. In this case, we're not going to have that problem, even though this is just one work site, because it has such a huge capacity for workers here. There's always going to be room for more, and the people somehow telepathically know that there's work available, so they will get on the buses. But if we ever get a situation where all of the spots are filled at one time, nobody is getting on the buses to the refinery at that moment. And that, that of course, will lead to an interruption in our production. But again, luckily, we have a large capacity for workers here. Now, the other thing is, the game has been receiving a lot of updates in this past week. And there again, I have to salute. We have to give our salutations to the developer, Peter. And basically, as far as I see, he is, he is man alone working on this game. There is, of course, someone who contributed the vehicle models. And uh, Rotum Hecht did the soundtrack. You can see all of that on one of their videos that accompanied the release of the game on Steam. But other than that, I think it's literally just one person. So props to him and he's been really getting us the updates and I'm sure this will be a, a good sign for the future. And one of those updates actually related to the loading of cargo onto vehicles. Because we see here we still don't have bitumen on the train and actually it can carry multiple consists as long as there's space and it's one of the same class of goods. So I was really stupid also destroying these tanks repeatedly. It was such a waste of money because there's a very simple way of solving this problem and I'm going to show you that now. So we have to remove the pipe first. Then we have to get the tanks back. Now I am going to get two tanks here, one for each of the goods. So we'll just place them more or less where we had them before. Like that. And now I just have to let them be built. So much money. But that's what you do comrades, you live and you learn. So the train is going to wait because it has to until it's full anyway, so now we pause again. This is important, you have to pause now. Don't connect anything. 
Now you say here, store this item. I thought this meant you basically stockpile this item, so it's not going to work for feeding goods into the train. But that's not how it works. This literally just means use this item. So you're going to store the fuel, and you are going to store the bitumen. And we're going to export and sell both of them. So, let's just reconnect this pipe for the umpteenth time. But this is critical. We have to. We're in a very dire financial situation here. That is a fact. Now, can I even connect this? It has to do quite the climb. Well, there it goes. Right, they should have power as well. Let's just double check. Does it now? Come on. No, it does not. Well, it does here. Maybe it's just because... Yes, it does have power. That's fine. Just paused it there, but then why doesn't it show the connection? Hmm. Mystery. Anyway, as long as it works. That's all I care about right now. So... Now, let's see if this works. Ah, well, we've got the bitumen going into this one tank. And... The fuel is not going into this one. Why? Is it going straight into the vehicle? Yes, there we go. So at least it's working. It's not storing it in the tanks first. I saw that it did that previously in another of my experiments. It waited until everything was full before passing it on to the train. So yes, comrades, I think we'll just have to wait here. Now again, we do see I'm saying store this item here, but it doesn't mean stockpile. It is passing it through. And I'm sure once that part is done, it will start feeding the bitumen onto the train. At least I hope so. So that's done now. The other thing is we're going to have a very big problem with our coal very soon as well. Because we're producing a lot of coal ore here. And then processing it. And you see it's already full. So nothing is happening anymore. Because the coal power plant doesn't use that much of it at the moment because that is indeed our current like they say production percentage so this is our total production that we are capable of producing but that's the current demand basically now i also learned a few other things in terms of the power plant even if you just have one person there it always produces at maximum potential capacity now what that means is Basically, the power plant is always capable of running at 100%, but the people are smart enough to only uh, produce as much as is needed. So that is literally what we need, and that is literally what we produce. Now, there's another problem here. I think this is wrong, this 1400 megawatts of power maximum production, unless it means all of your power plants combined if you one day have multiple power plants because this power plant does not produce 1400 megawatt hours it produces 23.35 megawatts so that is a hard limit because you'll see obviously you would expect the uh, potential to change depending on how many people are in the building but that never changes so that's a hard limit right there and currently we're producing 1.526 megawatts. So a very small percentage of our total potential. So that's a very interesting thing that I discovered. And it wasn't quite apparent to me last time what exactly was going on here. And one of the things that threw me off is this 1400 megawatts. But that's not true. It's 23.35. Now we can also see how much is being used at any particular point. For example, this building is using 0.145 megawatts at the moment, but it has the potential to go up to 0.86 at maximum production. So, of course, this will depend on how many people are here. 
So at least I understand the electrical system better now. Also, if we look here, for example, we see the capacity of the wires here is 2 watts or megawatt hours. But at the present time, we're only feeding through 0.145. So there we go. One thing. Now, the real thing here is, of course, the coal. It's all blocked up. We need to export this urgently. So I need to put a storage facility in place. So let's do that. Something I didn't even do at the beginning. So storage, uh, definitely the large aggregate storage. Now, I'm not interested in storing the coal ore. That can go straight into the processing plant. So the feeder has to come out of one of these two points here. And then also it has to go and connect to our train line because I want to sell it as urgently as possible. So how are we going to do this now? Hmm. It's of course a very rough terrain here. And we have to kind of work with the landscape. I can see the train line being fed through here, but somehow it has to meet here. I think it's going to have to be right here. Another thing that kind of sometimes bothers me is you can't line up the buildings with the grid underneath. You see it's not perfectly lined up. You see it's skew there. And I would like it if the default is level with the squares so that we can have a nice grid layout. But anyway, again, like I said before, our engineers have never done this before, so we can forgive them for a, a few skew designs there. So, now let's connect this right into that. That means also the workers are not going to be doing nothing here. They're going to be producing the whole time. The power is just the other thing now. Are you connected at all? Oh, you don't need power, I think. Maybe you do once you feed it through to something else. We'll see in a moment. Oh, that money is going to be a crisis, comrades. That's why we have to export this coal. Luckily, we're producing a lot of it. So that's a good thing. Also, I guess you can say now this is uh, one of our comrades asked, and I don't know if I now mentioned this already in this episode, could be, but anyway, one of our comrades asked which kind of socialism we will be using here in this republic, Maoism or Stalinism or various other kinds. I'm not sure, I, I'm convinced it's going to be a collection of different things. So the first thing that I'd like to do is now obviously set up this kind of export economy. So I don't know what kind of socialism or communism that is. But uh, what we are doing is we're learning from the lesson of many other countries where you don't just export your raw materials like oil or coal ore. We p uh, first refine it here and then we export it. If we have a look here, obviously we learned that lesson with the fuel. The fuel is worth a lot more than just the oil. And it's the same with the coal and the coal ore. The coal ore is worth just 9 rubles per ton I guess but if you process it into coal it's 21 rubles so that's a very good thing and of course by doing that we're creating employment and then our people have some money to have a better quality of life selling just the raw material is not usually a good idea so we learn from that right so we're now quickly filling up our coal storage here and this building is without power supply now how can we make this look nice that's my one concern as well hmm. so we've got the big splitter there I might Let's just use one of these small voltage switches right here. Now again, a lot of these I don't connect with the road and I hope they're not going to catch fire one day. Then we'll put it right there. This I will connect to the road. Oh dear, no, that's not going to work. It has to be this way. 
But that can't fit there. I feel also sometimes the hit boxes of the various buildings are a little too big. It's not really a hit box, but anyway, I created another portal there. It can just go there. I found it's also sometimes easier if you delete the roads and then place your buildings and then put the roads. You can fit a lot more things in. Now, I guess we'll use the maximum capacity wire here, just because I'm not sure if it's going to also contribute to the other buildings here. That doesn't look pretty. I don't like that. I'm going to have to redo that, but not now. We need money first. Okay, it's got power at least. So now the other thing is we need to just check up on our train. This is going to get us good money. If we can get this server setting up regularly, then we are golden, I think. But why aren't we also loading by Tumen? Maybe we can only load one at a time, but I have seen trains carry both. Because I'm not using the by Tumen at the moment. Or oh, Bitumen, I don't know. Making it my own, I guess, by Tumen. So, train. Again, we have to do this while we have the money for it. Train aggregate loading. This is what I'm looking for. Now. Wireframe, please. The train line has to go that way. That's difficult. It's not going to reach there. Maybe I should do the leveling first. Just help a little. Because I really want it right there. Right, that's enough. Train aggregate loading and this will work now, hopefully. Right, not a lot of money there. Anyway, now I need the conveyor. This should fit straight into that. Ah, put both of them in, why not? Then we can load the train faster. Then the connection. Now, I'm not going to double track the whole thing. That's going to be too expensive. I'm just going to create a few sidings so that the trains can pass one another. But I do want to at least join up somewhere here. Uh, it might even go up this way. Alright, let's do that. So this is going to be one of the sidings here. Now, let me just think about this. Hmm. Because I still want this to be powered as well. There, hopefully we can avoid those right angles that we sometimes see in the tracks. Right, so that gives us a connection here, but we still don't have power. So now, just have to make this long enough. Now we have to join here. And I did look this up before. The trains in Russia tend to drive on the right side. So, uh, in South Africa, it's actually on the left, just like with the road. So, we will make them pass on the right. So, I just need to have a nice connection there. That will also create the power connection. And like that. Right, so that's done. Now, we need the various semaphores. 
Now, this can be tricky, as I saw also from Colonel Failure's videos. You have to do this at all points. So, first of all, now I have to think. We're going on the right-hand side, so it has to wait right there. And we also need one here for the opposite way. And then we do the same here. So we need one here pointing backwards, and then one here pointing forwards. They can't line up exactly there, but that'll work. So this is now uh, an active connection there. Then the next one, I guess, we'll put somewhere before the bridge here. Also, the spacing out is maybe a good idea because that gives the storage facilities time to actually build up the stocks before the train arrives. So hopefully they don't have to wait so long to load. Pause. Now you're going on the right side. Ah, can't put it there. Ah oh, well, maybe we will. Like that. Then just continue. Oh no, we're almost down. Ah, this is definitely a problem, comrades. Now you're going up on the right side. Down on the right from the other perspective. Now, I think we'll just have one more siding. Maybe right here somewhere. This is so expensive. Just do the same thing here. So basically the semaphores have to be on the inside of the tracks. It's an easy way to think about it. Turn the wireframe off and now the other thing is we still have to buy the train. Now how are we going to connect that? I guess I'm going to have to do another connection here and then set it to go to the customs house first but then turn it around. Now this will only use one time so I'll just put a signal here for a moment. Stop. Electric locomotive, give me the cheaper one, that's fine. Cargo, I want the hopper. And hopefully that was our last big expense before we see money coming in. Now, you have to start on this end at Kazinchad, and there you're going to unload and you wait until you're unloaded. And then... You come back here and you load and you wait till you're loaded. Now hopefully I did that right. Start. And of course you start on the wrong track. Why do you do that? Come on now. I literally connected the other track as well. Please be smart enough. No, we're not smart enough. Didn't create a signal there, that's why. Now we should be smart enough. Right, you have to turn around. Go back to the depot. It's still going to take a while for this train to load up. But you see, this will be great money. Right, now again, try this again. Please go to the 
custom sounds first. Now just be smart enough to pass here or the, or the here. Yay, thank you. I just waited too late to put those in. Brave patriots. Androvian heroes. Let's ride along with the train. Hopefully the track isn't too bumpy. We don't want to spill our cargo before we get to the customs house. Right, where's the connection point? Okay, right, just wait till they pass there. Cancel the follow and stop. Stop, stop, stop. Now you have to first of all say go to this point and then t change the direction of the train. Right, why are you confused? It's the signal that's making you confused. The signal is a one way. Not to fear, comrade, I'm right here. Go, 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 go. And there we are. Still have a bit of these angles, but at least there's a bit of a curve to them. Yes, this will save our Republic from ruin, comrades. Let's hope my vision was a good one. Andreism is our philosophy and we will <laughs> survive here. So my philosophy, my socialist communist manifesto doctrine, whatever you want to call it, I guess is first of all we have to just get a source of money, actual hard currency on the global markets. So I guess this is not necessarily socialism in one country. Not sure. Although it is the same like Stalinism in a sense that focused on heavy industrialization at the beginning and of course farming collectivization, but we didn't even start with that part. But yes, we have to set up a market exchange with the rest of the world. And then we use their money to promote our revolution. And that should be quite good. We have hundreds of tons waiting already. Much better than letting this go to waste. Alright, it's fine. Just ignore the flashing there, of course. It's just passing it on as soon as it gets it there. How much power is our train network using? Only 0.8. 0 0.08 watts, megawatts. Hmm. Problem here is I can't tell them to just produce fuel or bitumen. It has to be both at the same time. So that's why production of fuel is a little bit slower than I might have wanted. But that's fine. You see it does say load all things. Should we start telling it to go? No, we'll wait a little longer. We're not impatient. That's our first priority. We're not impatient, comrades. We will be very patient patriots. And to celebrate that, we need a communist symbol. Even though we're almost out of money, we still need some kind of symbol of the workers and the heroes of this union who are saving us with their production. There. That will remind them, every day they drive to work, that they are part of something bigger. 
No one is going to visit this, but I'll still connect the pathway there. Yes, isn't that inspiring, comrades? We might need to bulldoze some trees here. Just so everyone can see it. Yes. Now that's our thumbnail for this episode. That I can guarantee you. Let me just remove the mouse there. F12. Great. Maybe I should do a close-up. <laughs> you can tell I'm becoming just like a communist dictator. I'm more uh, obsessed with these trappings of power than the real thing. But that's not true. Yeah, that's our thumbnail. So, what's happening with you? That's the real money maker right there. Two trips and we'll have over a hundred thousand rubles. And you will help a little. Ten thousand. I think I'll send this one on its way. There it goes. Gives this a chance to build up again. While the other one is waiting still. Great. So, then the next thing. We just have to check. Are we tapping into the full labor supply here now? I feel that we are. We are using so many buses now. I think we've maxed out these two or three towns. Actually, it's two because this is part of one town. Now, it will still say some are without a job and so on, but I've learned the lesson that this fluctuates a lot because sometimes even if there's full employment, you'll still get cases where someone is unemployed. And I guess that just means on that day they couldn't get a bus or something like that. The real thing that you have to look out for, you see there it goes up again, it fluctuates. But the real thing you have to look out for is the bigger numbers. So one can't work because there's no kindergarten. Ignore that one. We can see, of course, there is a kindergarten with space available. So that's just one person who had a problem at one time. The food is a big problem. The meat is a problem. The culture is less of a problem, but still no one is providing that because we don't have radio stations and so on, and clothes. Now, was it this building that I was looking at? So why aren't you getting those things? Because you don't have a shop in the town. And this building is without a power supply. We never connected the power into the towns yet. Well... Yes, so another lesson that I've learned is that people will definitely drive to other towns to get services like education or even to do shopping. But it doesn't happen very often. Let's put it that way. And that can lead to this kind of situation where so many of them couldn't get the chance to get food and things like that. Because they spend most of their time commuting and working and doing things like that. They can't spend more time to go and get food. So every town in my republic has to have a small store and a small shop. Same thing, but different. A grocery store and a small store. So that's a general store with clothes and electronics and food and meat, of course. The shopping center is later for big cities. Uh, cinemas not necessary and pubs are, of course, also necessary. Then another suggestion from a comrade was that we demolish the churches, but I think we're going to leave that. And it, I was right last time when I said it's strange that we have churches because the communist governments uh, discouraged religion and we can't actually build churches. So if you start on a blank map, you can't build one. But I think we'll keep it as a relic of our past. I think, see, this is now my, my version of communism, socialism. Others might go on these destructive orgies and purges like Mao, especially with Tibet and breaking down all the temples and harassing and killing the monks and all of that sort of thing. I'm not like him. You can worship, you can do whatever you want in that respect, but the state is not going to fund the building of churches anymore. So that's why we can't build a church. You know, I'm making up a story as I go. But we are not going to demolish this. This is a legacy. You know, it's a historical building. If you want to worship there, it's fine. 
and uh, just don't cause trouble, you know. Don't conspire to overthrow me, that's all. But I'm not going to go after you in a big purge. That's just ridiculous. Another thing that I thought we are ultimately probably going to do is some form of Ujamaa. Now that is a an African socialism and Ujamaa, one of the big principles of that, that was of course Julius Nyerere in uh, Tanzania, is that you move people into villages out from rural settlements and then you can provide better services to them if they're concentrated in one area. Of course that's just one aspect of Ujamaa and it was ultimately a failure but in this case we can even apply it inside towns because this person has no services really you see they don't even have the kindergarten so we move them into more concentrated central areas so that's where the prefabs will eventually come in and then ultimately in some of the smallest towns like Tabovina here, we might demolish it and move everyone into a bigger city eventually and so concentrate the population. Possibly. So we might have Ujama as well. Now I see my train is not here at the moment, so it must be somewhere else. Wow, they go fast. Right, so that's a good thing. While I was babbling about the virtues of socialism. We are going to make $73,000. Now you see that's or, or rubles. 89,000 bucks, but of course we're not selling it to the Westerners, the NATO bloc. But yes, this is my philosophy, the cornerstone of my philosophy in the game, of course. We can talk about the virtues of socialism and blah, 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 until we're blue in the face and we can have all of these ideals. But if we don't have the hard currency to support it, it's all just hot air and nonsense so there we go that's one thing just wait here now but yes we can see the money is coming in now so yes the other thing uh, we just come back to the nonsense in a minute I think we're still importing power that has to stop we're exporting the full 10 megawatts from now on that will give us a consistent increase in our money you can actually make good money from that at the start. Now we'll see here it's still reflecting only 1.3 megawatts. That should go up soon. I'm wondering why it has not done so. Did we connect? No we didn't. That's why. Stop right there. We never connected this thing to the grid. Because it stops right there and I even remember saying it has to continue from there. So of course it's not going to export anything. Now again this is going to be ugly comrades. And I know I don't want to make things ugly. But right now the practical elements supersede everything else. That's again my philosophy. Although it doesn't mean we can't make things pretty. We're going to go over the hills and the mountains, but let's just see where's my target, right there. Maybe we'll just take a straight line. Power lines tend to do that, as long as they have a clear sort of line of vision there. Yes, that's fine. I don't have a problem. It's rocky here and all of that, but that only is a testament to the skill of our engineers. But there's no logical clash there all right it's not going through a mountain now we should see money constantly running in you see we're now producing a lot more because there's a lot more demand it's over 50 percent of our total now if i had believed as i did before that it was 1400 megawatt hours then this wouldn't make sense so this is a flaw right there look at this number always this is your uh, maximum capacity so 12 of 23 but you don't have to worry in the case of the power plant to have it fully staffed at all times because even if there's one person it will still produce at maximum which i think is brilliant otherwise we would have constant interruptions right now this one is confused about something what on earth are you confused about
That light is green. Why are you confused? Whoa, wait a minute. What did I do here? I never did that. Hmm, strange. Someone made a mistake somewhere. Go back to the train loading. Turn around immediately, please. Still question mark. Stop. Problem. Right, let's follow the track. So you are not blocking anything here. It's green to pass through there. It's green to pass through there. Oh, I know where the problem is. The problem is right here. Because it's passing on the right and there's no way to get to the right from there. No problems. I'll put a diamond in. No, we should be careful of diamonds. Hmm. Think, think, think. How do we deal with this situation? Ah, this can cause a great bit of chaos here. I think really the easiest solution is to de demolish it. Just demolish that central connection. We'll create a new one. That was a temporary thing. And then go from the right to the left. We're still going to have a problem here, but then in that case I will put a double stop here and a double stop there. Because one of them might be... No, that is not going to work either. It has to be a diamond. Alright, experiments. We'll see if I can do it better than kernel failure. That's always a uh, a challenge, so we'll see. No, clearly that is not better. Unfortunately, if you delete something, you delete a lot of stuff. The bulldozer has an area of effect, basically. That should work. Right, now, double stop on either side. Because they're coming and going through there. But here we leave it like that. I think this will work. I think I've nailed it. We'll see. Am I good or am I good? Proof will tell. Now, first of all, turn back. There again, we can debate the virtues of socialism, but we need to get the trains running first. Now, please go, please go, please go. Yes! Okay, so it works. Right, so I've solved that. It checks the whole journey, and then if there's a problem, it stops right there. It doesn't go to where the problem actually lies. So, the big money maker, and we'll see, you see now it's at least constantly going up with the power. And we're not using that power capacity, so that is another thing. I think I'm going to make a tutorial series as well at some point. Just to have little basics for new players. I think it is a great way to start by having your power situation taken care of. Because then you sell that. It's not going to make you lots and lots and lots of money, but it is going to bring your account up. Now why is it fluctuating so wildly here? That is a thing that shouldn't be happening. Let's just have a look. Another thing that was fixed was your buildings won't auto purchase at the start anymore. Like this one. So clear that. We don't need to buy oil. I think that's the only one. We're not buying coal. I remember deleting that. We're not buying coal ore. 
I think that was the problem. Yes, we were buying oil the whole time to supplement our own supply. So now this is what we should be seeing, a constant growth, slow but steady, and then occasionally punctuated by little dips as people import little bits of fuel for the gas station or food and things like that. So I think our financial situation should be stabilizing now, especially with this beauty. You beauty. Show me the money. Comrades, we're going to drive this train into the uh, exchange or customs house, the border crossing, and then I just want to see if anyone has tried to escape from our republic so far, and then I think we'll end off for today. It's a little step again, but it, it's a very important one. This is the practical side, the bread and butter issues of socialism. Actually, I should probably say communism, because socialism has so many facets to it. Communism is more the hardcore, Soviet-style socialism, I guess. But yes, uh, we can debate the intricacies. Oh, there's a landslide, but we just drive over that. In Soviet Russia, I don't even know how to continue with that. Train drives over landslide? Landslide drives over you? I don't know. I feel like this is a perfect series for all those memes. We should have some in every episode. Or in the comments as well. Kazinchad. There is our great republic. So I think we are a Soviet republic. I was saying now we're an Eastern European country, but we are part of the Soviet Union. That's why I made the flag like that. And there goes our beautiful fuel to the rest of the Union. Now, we can also do an import-export economy, like an entrepot in a sense, but we import the raw materials and export the processed materials. That's also a good way to make money. But that should be closer to the border because you still have to pay the transport costs. And I hope you're not stuck here. Now that is what I want to see. So now we have to live within our means, comrades. But this will now just continue happening for the rest of time, hopefully. And we'll just see money. I just want to see that this is going to turn around now. Maybe there's a power cut somewhere in the rest of the Soviet Union. But our train is affected by it. Why? Stop! Why is there power outage here? What is happening? We have no coal. We have no coal. How is that possible? Something went wrong somewhere. I know it's throwing it on the stockpile, but it should also be directing it in here. That is very strange. It's not supposed to only send it to the one point. And of course, because of that, the mines have now stopped. I think we're going to for safety, comrades. We will say import coal, but only a minimum amount We'll keep it like this. That is only a safety margin. We can say an emergency measure to keep the power plant running if it's not being supplied. Because without power we're completely doomed. And now we should be getting it again. Why are you only... Now you see this is not right. Why are you only putting it through there? Surely you'd split it based on the need, from each according to his ability to, to each according to his need, right? Hmm. 
Maybe we'll just have to put this connection from the storage facility then. That's odd. I don't want to micromanage this by turning this off and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you can only do one per... Okay, never mind. I didn't know that. I didn't realize you could only do one at a time. No, but you can do more than one at a time. But it's not doing that. The engine... Wait, let's just see. The engine's currently not operating. The source is not sending a resource. Yes, it is. There's a mess up here. At least we have over 400,000 rubles again. But there's a severe problem here. I did not set up this whole thing so that we could just export coal. Our first priority is to supply ourselves. Always. I might just have to send it from the storage. I think we'll have to do that. It's still going to drain the whole thing every time the train comes, but I'm, I'll, in that case I'll just tell it to export like 80% of its full load or less than that. But we have to supply our own power first. Always. We must. So I guess some form of self-sufficiency is also part of my doctrine. Now of course I need a thing here. Now, in this case, I'll put it in an, at an angle like that. Problems. Problems because of the height problem here. Good thing to do this planning while you're paused. Then it doesn't cost you. No, this will not work. This will not work. This will not work. We need to do some terraforming here. Just enough to let the conveyor pass. But this is urgent. Now I hope that's enough. No, it's still not enough. Drop some more. Oh yeah, but that's not an input, of course. Stop, 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 stop. Destroy that, destroy that. Connect that. Let it play. Destroy that. Wait for the rubble to be cleared. And stop again. Then connect the input to the right side now. Now I hope we can get this thing across the road here. Yes. Alright. Again, I'd like this stuff to be more aligned here. But at least it's working now. Now we can do both the storage and the power plant at the same time. Now of course right now it's taking a lot because it needs to fill. But after that it's only going to take a little bit. And it's still filling up. Or it should anyway. Comrades, what's happening with our production? Hmm, more workers are needed. This one is fine, it only uses 15. It's the mine that's the problem now. See, it is now going back up again, 309. But this will be a problem when we export it, because it's barely growing now. And this is because of our extra power generation. And there's the train. It might be necessary to cancel the train export because previously we were not exporting power so we were not using so much coal 
Now it's barely growing. I'll let it continue for now. I'll just let it fill up and or as much as it can carry and then go to the customs house. Yes, you see it's staying at less than one because it's as soon as it's produced it's fed into the furnace. It is growing a little, but it's not going to be enough to export on a whole train, so scratch that idea. But the oil has to be the main thing, or the fuel. Fuel has to be the main thing. We're never going to use that much anyway. Or by human. Good, good, good. This is more than enough for one train load. Right, so I'm going to have to watch this business. It's just feeding it now as necessary. But this is key. This is a constant money maker. Maybe even more so than selling the coal. Right, comrades, I'll end here. Not too long. So I will see you again soon. And we can debate the virtues of socialism later. But uh, there we are. So see you soon, comrades. Have a fantastic day. And I hope you're still enjoying living here in uh, Androvia. So yes, also I still have to make a video about the thousand subscribers. That is a fantastic achievement, but that will be a separate video. So see you soon. Have a great week, comrades.